on resources and to grant resources and breed resources. But that's the difference. Um, the next slide sort of ties to the as a diagram. So this MTA has resources and these are your motions. These are uh, relations. So it's about to be read or write or otherwise. Um, in our context, resources are technically columns from a table. Uh, they could also be external files or shared variables or anything else which more than one more person might, uh, might need to access. So this one right here, um, this row here, that, that represents one operation. Um, and th this is a table. Uh, so you can see the columns of the table, uh, A3. And this particular operation writes uh, to column A in the table and also reads uh, column A. Um, so uh, the this dual view of this operation would only present the operation with uh, the column A of the table and the rest of the table would be invisible. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, here are the real versions. Um, or here are five. If, if there are going to be some versions, can we infer the order of the version we run it? Uh, just by just by looking at uh, the <coughs> and files, um, and so how, and, and that's what the dependencies order sort. It's a dependency sort that takes bits as input, obviously in a parallel form, and as output it uh, creates a dependency graph for the sketch of these operations. In the original example, the only five operations, but in uh, the code we have uh, been. 30 and 100 operations, there's lots of operations. And so, well, here yeah, it just it works out with a pen and paper, which is a great sketch of your operation. When you have hundreds of operations, it becomes somewhat harder. Um, whenever a column state has changed, the dependency order reruns all operations which depended from that column. Um, uh, so it's this presents each operation with a sort of finalized state of the table, and it, it, as if the table had never been any intermediate state, so therefore it gets changed from operation to be well. This creates a problem of a uh, company cycle, if there was a cycle of the dependency of it, then um, the, uh, the geogram would be not terminated, it would keep on repeating the same operation. Uh, but the, this part using these assumptions as is, is that while we present an elegant model, you are limited by the number of columns that you have. If you have eight columns, then you only have n operations. So you've got one operation per column. You can't find any more operations than that without introducing a cipher. Uh, so we can get on that by uh, relaxing, uh, relaxing our constraints somewhat. Uh, if we allow operation sequences, um, and so these are uh, Sequence of operations that would cause a cycle, but instead you specify what's called relative ordering, and that creates a cycle. In the, um, the dependency graph, you can see here it's a uh, two to three is a cycle. By uh, inputting this code here, it's saying node three depends on node two. So the dependency over breaks the cycle here by setting node two in front of node three. Uh, the data power is, is this, this kind of manual interaction, you've got to know yourself um, where to create the cycle. But it means that you are now unbounded to the number of operations that you can get um, And uh, this is uh, 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 where you go to the dependent node of the previous time, and you can see the resulting uh, penalty graph is different. Um, okay, so this, this is an example of how to sketch your resource versions. Um, so here we can see that uh, 
Um, however, what we should require virus 2, column B, that's, uh, that's read by uh, both operations 2 and 3. Uh, so all operation 1 must be 1 first. Um, and so this is the tendency graph for, for this, uh, this set of uh, operations. Um, if we were to run operation 2 before 1, then in a sense it would be valid, but we would have to run operation uh, 2 again. Uh, we would have to run operation 2 after 1 as well. The, the point I'm trying to illustrate is you, you can run an operation multiple times um, like, like this. The thing is, the first running of operation 2 has absolutely no effect. It runs to column C, which has been never again read, but it's written to again. And so you could, uh, uh, you could choose not to run operation 2 without having any kind of effect on the jumper. And so it's done. So we, we, uh, the defendant sort of uh, tries not to do this. Um, so, relative portraits. In this set of operations here, uh, you can see operation 2 maps to column C. Um, Uh, and that's my goal, uh, I'm going to mention that 